is on us. Layla. Seen a bit of that around now. This guy has an incredible rags to riches story. Now he's making the tough calls on Celebrity Apprentice. For that reason, Prinny, you're fired. All right, Mark joins us now. Look at the shocked look on their faces. We're loving this season. Um, who would you back in a fight, Stephanie Rice or Dawn Fraser? Dawn. <laughs> Dawn every day of the week. She might be 73 or 74, but she'd nail it. Yeah, I love it how you don't pussyfoot around the big questions like that. Now, you've got a new book out, What It Takes. Um, the, the headline says, Hard Work, Commitment and Purpose. So let's say you've got those three things. What else do you need to have to make it in business? What, what would you say practically to people? Well, you need to, you've got to have a plan. Most people go into these things with a mission statement as opposed to a plan. Why am I in the business? Am I in the business to build this up to make it like a certain value and over what period of time? So go to the fifth year and say in five years I want this business to be worth 500000 or whatever the number is and work backwards. Instead of starting off with a mission statement about I want to be the best of this and I want to be the greatest of that, actually come up with a number that you're heading towards and make that part of your business plan. When it comes to things like um, taking on staff, say you're a small business and you're taking on your first employee and the, uh, what kind of things should you look for? You've got to get people to understand your purpose and that they buy into that and they're act absolutely 100% committed to your purpose. You don't want people to take who want your job either. You want people going to support the, power, the role that you play in the business. So you don't want someone too ambitious but you want people with plenty of, an, uh, plenty of energy, heaps and heaps of energy. Now we said you're a rags to riches story, that might be exaggerating, I wouldn't, wouldn't say rags, but how did you start out? You know, your dad was a cleaner, wasn't he? Yeah, well my dad had lots of jobs, my dad basically came to this country as a migrant, couldn't speak English, so he didn't have many opportunities to walk into a profession for example. Um, I wouldn't say rags, I'd say lower middle class, western suburbs, um, but I'd had, I had everything I needed as a kid. I had great parents for a start, great parents. And you and your brother have done amazingly well in business, so what would you put that down to? Hard work, pure hard work. There's no shortcuts. I mean, as I start off in the book I say something like this, and I'm actually addressing all those people who pay tens of thousands of dollars to go to these things where they think they're going to find out some secrets, some secrets to success. It's all BS, there's no such thing as a secret to success. There are no secrets other than work hard, be committed and have a very good purpose. And purpose, by what I mean by purpose, Layla, is actually have a rightful purpose. Know what your purpose is as opposed to just churning through every day. So get up early, work, to work late, hmm. um, be prepared to put in that commitment. There's no days off if you're starting off a business. There's no days off, there's no minutes off, there's no moments off. You've got to be completely committed to it. In other words, because uh, if, you, if you start to think to yourself, Oh, I'm going to go away for five days here and six days there and I've got to make sure I bake in my next holiday because I have to have holidays. All of a sudden the business is going to get ahead of you and your competitors will get ahead of you. Um, you know what it's like. Yeah, well, you, the, the Celebrity Apprentice is a TV show, but yeah. what kind of things do you see um, people doing wrong when it comes to some of these challenges? What's the most common mistake? Um, plain up to me. Really? The most common mistake is telling me what they think I want to hear when in fact I already know what's going on in the, in the challenge. I mean, I've got two advisors telling me what's going on in the challenge, I've got a production crew telling me what's going on in the challenge, and if I'll find out because someone else will tell me what went in on the challenge. So they play up to me. It's a big mistake. Upward management in any business is stupid. It doesn't work. When, when you really fire people in your business, <laughs> do you do it like that? Uh, I have done it. Not, not very not often. Like no, 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 absolutely not that bang down. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Well, that's not very Aussie. It's not very Australian. It's no. not cool. You can't do that. Generally speaking, we would say something like, we've got to let you go. Mm. Or your job is now redundant. Um, but that doesn't work so well on the show. Uh, well, you know what it's like. <laughs> it's much more dramatic. Yeah. You're fired. You know? And do you get people stopping you in the street to want to be told you're fired? All the time, Lala. Like, guys uh, and girls, they yell it out. I, I, especially tradies. I can be stopped in my car, and if I've got my window down, they see me. They yell out through the window, then they take off. <laughs> <laughs> they do, you're fired. So you've been fired a lot lately. I've been fired a lot. I, around this time of year, every year, I've been, for the last three years, I've been getting fired a lot. Have you ever been fired? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, GE terminated me in 2009 when they sold the wizard business but to Aussie. didn't they give you a little bit of cash as well? Oh, it, was a, it was a good firing. But... <laughs> It was, a, it was a good firing, but, but still I was terminated and, uh, and they, you know, this is, the, no, actually this is after G bought the business and they ran it for five years with me as a chairman, then they sold to Aussie CBA and they basically closed all their financial services businesses down around the world 
and this one actually they did terminate me on a particular day, and it was actually it was devastating. Was for it? Me. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely devastating for me. In fact, I'd never been fired in my life, and I actually got a massive shock because all of a sudden I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know what I was going to do f from 2009 on, which is why I studied Olympic Road because I needed a purpose. Now, um, with the economy the way it is, and with your campaign to get Australians to take more control of their superannuation, because we all have to have superannuation, but as you say, very few of us know how much we've got or what we're investing in, what would you say is the right thing to do now with our money? Right, right now? I think it's first, keep it simple, because equity markets are very volatile. They'll give you brain damage. So keep it very simple. If you've got $100,000 in your super or $50,000 in your super, you should go to a product where 50% is in a fixed income type product like term, term deposit yeah. and the other 50% is buying the Australian uh, All Ordinaries Index. Very simple, low fees and just wait until another time, sometime down the track, when markets start to become more stable. They're very unstable at the moment. So if you were a young person and a lot of people have the dream of owning a, a house, Obviously, a lot of young people put 100% of their income into a home. Is that something that you would recommend, or would you say to rent and to invest in things like um, term deposits and shares? Um, I think right now and for the next five years, property in this country, particularly in the major cities, will become the hottest asset class or investment class you can possibly think of. The Reserve Bank is going to bring interest rates down so low that we've never seen them for, for 50, 60 years. How low will they go? I think we'll see our interest rates, our retail rates and the Reserve Bank's rates down to 40-year lows, below 2.5%. Really? That's the Reserve Bank rate. The interest rate that borrowers will be getting will be 4, 4.5. That is a historically low rate. What that does is that repositions house prices upwards. So from now to maybe five years' time, House prices will go up quite a lot, and I think it's a good time to take the opportunity to invest in real estate. And being aware, though, that those interest rates will rise. The interest so rates, you absolutely. should be careful about how much you borrow. And correct. And you don't want to be at the end of the market in five years' time when you're paying the top price. And we've seen this before. We saw this between 1996 and 2005. People went mad. Anyone who bought around five, six, and seven probably paid too much. Anybody who bought prior to that did well, made money out of it. So this is about a cycle game getting in whilst the rates are coming down, making sure that you're not paying the top price because everything in life, about in business and investments, is about your purchase price, your entry price. And the cycles that and are the cycles. to come. All right, now, um, Dane Burris, your son, is an advisor on Celebrity Apprentice. Um, I guess he's not in any danger of getting fired soon. I don't know. It depends on how he goes on this Clio thing. <laughs> no, that's what I was going to say. He's in the Clio Bachelor of the Year competition. It, he doesn't mind a bit of a fancy shirt, does he? How do you think that'll go down with the women out there? Um, well, I'm not that sort of close to his age group, so I don't really know what they're looking for these days. <laughs> well, what are you looking for in a daughter-in-law if he's a bachelor? Who would you like to see him end up with? Uh, Hmm. Someone who's been going out with for at least five years, so they <laughs> know who he is. Uh, actually, funny, his brothers uh, give him plenty over this. I mean, he's got three brothers, and they really smack him around. And I got a, I got, well, I won't say what I got last night off his youngest brother, Jimmy, but um, they're they, they used to watching him, and they're starting to get a bit interested in the way he's performing out there. I think you can say you got a text message that said WTF. WTF. Yeah. It came from Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, he's a bad one. He's going to be a Bachelor of the Year uh, nominee as well. Well, thanks for coming in, Mark. You're welcome, And later. sharing your advice. Great to see you. And um, we'll be watching the show. Thank you. Over to you, Cam. Yeah, very interesting chat. Thanks for that, Layla. It's the pregnancy the whole world is watching. Catherine Middleton set to give birth in July. So many intriguing questions still unanswered. Who will be the godparents? And how will the Queen and Prince Philip fare as grandparents? Nick Watt takes us inside the House of Windsor. What a grandma and great-grandma this little kid will have. In the blue blood corner, we have Queen Elizabeth II.